All right, so what do we have in this practice problem? Um, company can produce a part that it uses internally, all right, in an assembly operation. So they are producing the part. They can sell it. They can buy it, of course, but they can produce it also. And they can produce at a rate of uh, 50 per hour. Okay, so this is our small p. The company operates eight hours a day, 300 days a year. Daily usage of this part, so in their assembly operation, they they use it at a rate of 300 an hour. Uh, sorry, it's 300 a day, all right? So this is what, this is our small u, small u. And, <clears throat> okay, the current batch size is 6,000. This is their production quantity. It's given to us, so they are not asking us to find it for them. Okay, they want to use that uh, batch size. The annual holding cost is $2 per unit. So this is our H, small h. Uh, okay, here we go. H is $2. And the setup cost is 100 So that's capital S. Okay. So what the first question, how many batches will be produced in a year? You don't need to remember uh, that, in fact, or this is a very obvious uh, um, uh, metric, how, how to find it, okay? But if, just in case you forgot about it, you have a formula sheet that says total cost is I max over two times H plus D over Q times S. So we look here, right? Um, we're multiplying a certain number, which is this one, by S, which is the number, or, or sorry, it's the setup cost. Why we're doing that? Why? Because this is our setup, annual setup cost. So we are multiplying S by this value, which is D over Q. Why? Because D over Q represents the number of setups, the number of batches, the number of cycles. So that's it. This is how you answer this question. It's D over Q, but what's D? We're not given uh, a capital D, but we can get it because D is what? D comes from the internal consumption, and we know that small u is 300, okay? We, we found it here, 300, and it's 300 every day, okay? We multiply it by 300 days a year, and we get 90,000, okay? So this is how we got this uh, capital D, divided by Q, which is given, so it's 15 batches, okay? Part B. Why production is occurring, how many parts per day are being added to inventory? Okay. If you were told that as long as the producing machine um, is running, you cannot use uh, uh, the output, then it's very obvious that we will be building up at, at the inventory at a rate of the production rate. However, what we know about the EPQ model is that during the production time, we are also consuming, okay? So the, the, the inventory buildup rate uh, comes at a rate of what? At a production rate minus the demand rate, right? We discussed that earlier. So that's equal to 400 minus 300. So we are building up at a rate of 100 units per day. Part C, what the average inventory being held? <clears throat> What do we know about the average inventory? You can also go back to your total cost uh, um, equation, right? That says it's equal to I max over two times H. Why we're multiplying H by that? Because this is our average inventory, you see? So your average inventory is I max over two. So we need to find I max. I max is also given to us uh, at a rate, uh, sorry, as, as in expressed in terms of Q. It's equal to Q times 1 minus demand rate over production rate. Everything is known for us now, so it's 6,000, 1 minus 300 over 400. So that's 25% of the production uh, quantity or the batch size. It's 1,500 units. Okay, so we'll proceed in the next slide. Okay, in uh, Part D, <clears throat> The question is, how many days per year the machine will be operating? Hmm. So how to answer this question? 
what do we know about um, the operating days? In fact, we, we have come across an equation that says the production run or the runtime is equal to Q over P, right? So it's 6,000 over 400, but the runtime is what? It's how, how many days you're running your machine every cycle. So here we go. I added this one here. Remember that it's every cycle. But the question is, I need to know how many days you are running the machine for the whole year. So what do you think? In, in every cycle, we run the machine 15 days during the whole year. How many uh, days we run the machine? So what we need to know is we need to know how many cycles we have and we multiply it by 15 and this will be the answer. So how many cycles do we have? We found it from the previous from the previous question, how many batches, right? So that's fif that, uh, uh, 15, we found it before. So we multiply 15 days per cycle times the number of cycles, and that's 225 days per year, all right? E, the machine is dedicated to this product, so that's it. We use this machine only for that product. Now, as you know, uh, in any um, production plant, uh, when you rely on machineries, you need to do some preventive maintenance. What's preventive maintenance is um, you do some maintenance, not because there was a, a breakdown in the machine, but just to avoid any breakdown, okay? So it is plant uh, uh, maintenance. So this preventive maintenance requires six working days, okay? Now, the question is, would this interrupt the production cycle? So let's see. How can we answer this question? Let's remember the profile of our uh, inventory on hand in an EPQ model. Okay, so let's, let's remember uh, this profile. Um, what happens here, we start our production for the first batch, and here we stop the production. So between, uh, sorry, and then we start production of the second batch, etc., etc. So this is what's happening in the EPQ model. Now, before between starting the production and stopping the production, what's that? Okay, this is where it's a time when we produce and consume simultaneously. And between stopping the production and starting the new batch or the new cycle, Okay, this is a time when, when we are simply consuming, right? We stopped here our production, and from this time uh, point onwards, we simply consume. All right, let's call this point time T1 and this point time T2. So what is T2, in fact? Okay, T2 is the cycle time, right? This is one cycle. Every triangle is one cycle. So T2 represents the end of the first cycle. Now, we can see easily that any cycle is made out of two times. We have this one and we have that one. The first one is T1 and it represents the runtime. What about the second one? What's happening here in terms of the machine? Nothing. Right, we said stop production. So from this point, T1 to T2, the machine is stopped, so it's idle, and that's why we call it an idle time. And this is what they, what we want to find in order to, to, to verify whether the preventive maintenance would interrupt our cycles. Why? Because what happens here during my uh, uh, idle time, I can do anything with my machinery, right? So. Let's find the idle time then. So I'm going to use this equation when my unknown is the idle time. So idle time is cycle time minus run time. All right. What's our cycle time? Cycle time, we can find it by Q over D, which is 6,000 over 300. That's 20 days. So that's it. This is my, my cycle time, which is T2, is uh, uh, 20 days. All right. Um, Okay, now what about uh, uh, the runtime? The runtime we found it uh, before to be equal to 15 
15 days so now I can find my idle time my under, idle time is 20 minus 15 that's five days so that's that's five days um, in fact this now diagram is not uh, proportional in, in fact it's the opposite uh, t1 is greater than uh, the idle time so it doesn't matter what matters is the logic okay so we find the idle time to be five days and five days is less than six days required for the preventive maintenance so we conclude that you know there would be an interruption for our cycles okay this last uh, question i like it a lot because it really um, shows a very good understanding for the concepts underlying uh, the epq model so i hope that you understood the solution method and I strongly advise you to practice at least one more problem on your own.